I'm Professor Imran Faruqi from Syracuse University's Newhouse School of Public Communications in the TV, radio, and film program. And this is uh, music, music business, blockchain, and NFTs, the future of music ownership, merchandising, and monetization. And I'm Ulf Osterley from the Bandier program at the Newhouse School of Syracuse University. One of the biggest topics that we've had to discuss over the last year has been the non-fungible token market, the NFT market. And NFTs are digital assets that are verifiable and typically reside on the Ethereum blockchain, though other blockchain NFTs do exist. Um, the blockchain allows for verifiable proof of authenticity for any one of these digital assets. So, you know, an artist can still retain their original copyright. They can retain the reproduction rights just like you would with any physical artwork. So some do question the long-term viability of NFTs in the marketplace, but NFTs have made some artists uh, a whole lot of money this past year. So where do we find NFTs today? Uh, art and music are the major sellers and artists like Beeple have sold NFTs for $69 million, uh, positioning him as one of the most uh, valuable artists that are still living today. Uh, Christie's Auction House facilitated that sale, uh, but Beeple will also participate in the resale of his artwork and, uh, when artwork changes hands in the future. This really gives us an opportunity to monetize the secondary market. And this is something the music industry has struggled at monetizing for a number of years. We can capture and create value for the original rights holder or the live music promoter when we are selling using blockchain and NFTs. Several artists have gotten into the NFT market, including Grimes, Shawn Mendes, Steve Aoki, Quavo, Lil Baby, 2 Chains, Jack Harlow, Tory Lanez, uh, Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park, and Blau. Uh, we also saw the first full-length DJ concert uh, sold as an NFT. Uh, that was Destination Hexagonia by uh, Don Diablo. And this was something that sold in a matter of minutes uh, for $1.2 million, though it did take a year to create that experience. Uh, we do see NFTs in the sports world, primarily with NBA Top Shop. Uh, NBA Top Shot really captures those moments that we see in basketball games and sells those like we would trading cards. Uh, this NFT marketplace has even cracked um, real estate, where the first NFT was listed that was bundled with an actual house that inspired that NFT artwork. Several artists have gotten into the NFT market, including Grimes, Shawn Mendes, Steve Aoki, Quavo, Lil Baby, 2 Chains. Jack Harlow, Tory Lanez, uh, Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park, and Blau. Uh, we also saw the first full-length DJ concert uh, sold as an NFT. Uh, that was Destination Hexagonia by uh, Don Diablo. And this was something that sold in a matter of minutes uh, for $1.2 million, though it did take a year to create that experience. Uh, we do see NFTs in the sports world, primarily with NBA Top Shop. Uh, NBA Top Shot really captures those moments that we see in basketball games and sells those like we would trading cards. Uh, this NFT marketplace has even cracked um, real estate, where the first NFT was listed that was bundled with an actual house that inspired that NFT artwork. NFTs have really given us the opportunity to monetize digital content in a way that we haven't before. And artists have been making a whole lot of money off of these NFTs. Grimes sold 33 of her NFTs, which were basically uh, video or images put to music for $6 million. And Blau earned around $11 million from his NFT drop in March of 2021. Um, though we have seen prices for NFTs drop through April 2021, uh, the market is still there. And Crypto.com has been launching NFTs uh, with their drops weekly, and there's a ton of opportunity to purchase NFTs, uh, both on Nifty Gateway and OpenSea, two of the primary retail locations where NFTs are being sold, in addition to what we see happening with Yellowheart. It's the ability to add a smart contract to these non-fungible tokens that really 
give us an opportunity to monetize long term with these particular NFTs. All of the rights associated with that NFT could be bundled into the smart contract, as well as directing future payouts for resale of this particular piece. Now, there are economic implications when we're talking about NFTs. The cost of minting your NFT, typically called the gas price, is something that you have to factor in when you're looking to launch any NFT. So for smaller artists that don't have a substantial fan base or don't have a substantial uh, economic pool to draw from, those artists may not really want to step into the NFT marketplace right away. But for those artists who do have a following, it has been shown to be an opportunity to sell additional content. Now, some of this content can be in the form of merchandise bundles because that is a uh, practice that we do see where there's merchandise bundled with an NFT. This was key to the NFT launch for uh, Kings of Leon. We also see the future with NFT and blockchain backed ticketing. And this is really an opportunity for uh, all of us to participate in the secondary market when tickets do get resold because the blockchain will verify that yes, indeed, this is an actual ticket. And uh, if there is a resale of that ticket for more than the face value, the artist and their team will be able to participate in uh, some of the economic uh, upside of reselling. And that's a big, big uh, positive of using NFTs and blockchain for ticketing down the road. Certain experiences, fan experiences can also be built into uh, NFTs and um, certainly the NFT merchandise bundle is what we'll see in the live space. From a recording standpoint, you may see artists release NFTs as a scarce resource in order to capitalize on the resale of those particular songs that they put out. Because if every transaction will lead to um, additional money in the artist's pocket, then that may be uh, a model that outweighs what we do see with the half cent per stream model uh, for Spotify or Apple Music today. NFTs have some limitations. The limitations of NFTs. So there are three basic aspects of NFTs that uh, provide some limits on its functionality, its applicability into the music business ecosystem. So some of those are outlined here. For, for one, NFTs are based on smart contracts functionality. And uh, we've discussed what smart contracts are, but we need to examine a little bit more closely how they work as far as their applicability in a broader spectrum of the music business. Secondly, how legally valid are transactions for NFTs? Obviously, everything is done in this um, digital system, the smart contract and on the blockchain. Is that sufficient for purposes of our legal system? And then lastly, what about dispute resolution? That's an, uh, a growing topic of concern with regards to NFT transactions. If there is a dispute, how do power NFTs uh, resolve, uh, at least as far as their sales are concerned, and any transaction of um, music rights involved? So we're gonna analyze uh, those three factors and limitations more specifically. Smart contract functionality. One of the basic tenets of NFTs and transactions involving them is the fact that they are based on smart contracts, which are self-executing in nature. Now, what does that mean? Uh, it's often been compared to a simple transaction like going to a vending machine. You put money in the machine, you press the button for which item you want, and the vending machine executes it by providing you that item. The same is true for smart contracts. That's what it means to be self-executing, is that once a certain set of conditions are met, such as putting the money into the slot and selecting a button, then the rest of the transaction is completed and performed automatically. So smart contracts work in the same way, and that is how NFTs are transacted as well. So once a bunch of protocols have been met uh, on the blockchain, the smart contract will essentially uh, be created out of coded data from the blockchain and then initiate the transfer of the funds as well as the transfer of the 
actual articles of merchandise or tickets or recordings, whatever the item may be uh, that embodies the NFT. So that seems very efficient and it's very useful in many contexts, particularly when it's a very simple transaction, such as buying tickets, buying a copy of a recording that's limited to a certain number, or buying um, you know, other um, singular defined items. That can be accomplished very simply with the logic system that's built into smart contracts. Smart contracts operate on Boolean logic, which is a basic system of if-then scenarios. Right. If the money is paid, then the item will be released. That's a very simple process. However, this is not the process by which most legal contracts actually operate under. Most legal contracts have much more complicated terms and are not as simple as uh, an automated system like that. Most contracts require a level of human analysis to determine different uh, performance uh, requirements for the parties to an agreement. Contracts, uh, regular contracts are also designed to be interpreted by outside parties who will review the contract itself in case there is an issue of dispute or some sort of enforcement aspects of the contract and transaction. A court must be able to review the contract and interpret the meaning of the parties and their intent behind the language in it. When the contract is purely based on Boolean logic coding, then there is no need for human analysis, but that also limits the different transactions that can be accomplished within a smart contract. There's no uh, room for outside interpretation, which proves to make some uses of NFTs very difficult. For instance, licensing. If you wanted to license uh, a particular recording, for instance, that could be quite difficult under uh, to do with an NFT because the smart contracts don't really allow for some nuances of licensing to, to work. And let's be clear, NFTs may be distinct from the underlying intellectual property that embodies them. So we know that a sound recording of a, of a musical composition, a recording has its own copyrights. But each copy of a recording that a uh, end user or consumer may purchase is going to be different than the underlying copyright. So if I go buy a record from, you know, a, a vinyl record from a record store, that is going not going to transfer copyright ownership of the master recording to me, but I simply will own my physical good. So NFTs operate very much in that vein. It is a copy of you know or a, um, a reproduction of the underlying ip so it's not that copyrights are being transferred with nft sales although that is a possibility to use to do those transfers on a blockchain but that's even more complicated but nfts are simply those goods being sold based on underlying ip so with that in mind if you do want to transact a license Right, so you say you can use this uh, NFT, this recording, this limited recording for a specific purpose. Well, then there are certain other aspects that play a factor, right? What are those conditions that the recording can be used in? How do we track those conditions? Is there a level of interpretation for how you're using a product to determine whether or not that's going to be in violation of the contract terms or not? So Concepts like reasonableness, good faith, fair use, all of those concepts that are typical in contract analysis and contract terminology are not quite codable. So therefore, they're not, you're not able to implement them into smart contract functionality and use them with NFT sales. So the universe in which NFTs can actually be transacted is quite limited to a straightforward uh, determined sales of goods, not so much uh, licensing and other contractual transactions that dominate the music business. In order for us to expand this functionality, there would need to be a universal coding standard for conditional uses of certain assets. So if merchandise was going to be only be permitted to use to be used in a certain manner, if you purchased it, 
then we would need to know what those protocols are across the board so that there's some level of reference. Otherwise, things like reasonableness and good faith, those things are not going to be able to be enforced in a smart contract just based on the nature of its functionality. Legal validity is another question. So contracts by law require, uh, at least as far as the United States goes, majority of jurisdictions will uh, have contract laws that require mutual intent to enter an agreement between the parties and consideration. Consideration referring to something being exchanged for something else. Both parties need to provide some sort of consideration to the other party. So a mutual exchange is required. Now, with regards to the issue of intent, it's not clear as to whether or not coded data can function as a legal instrument. We don't quite know whether or not coding is going to be sufficient to manifest the party's mutual intent. Now, it's been argued that the self-executing nature of these transactions by themselves is enough on their own to prove that the parties intended to enter into this agreement because their performance of the agreement is automated. But this has not been widely tested in any US courts. And so that is going to be an area of uh, concern as far as whether or not these contracts can, these uh, sales of NFTs and contracts for the sales are going to be legally binding so that parties may have recourse and remedies in case there is an issue. Also, it's important to note that contract law differs from state to state. There's no federal um, uniform uh, contract law governing uh, how data would be treated as far as serving as a musical, as uh, a legal instrument. So therefore, that's something that's gonna need to evolve over time as each state adopts legislation and case law requisite to show that coded data can serve this function. There also needs to be some sort of applicability to the Uniform Commercial Code, which governs the sale of goods in most contracts. So the Uniform Commercial Code has certain standards and rules. And if we are going to treat NFT sales as proper commercial goods, as transactions of commercial goods, then we need to figure out how those transactions fit within or can embody the principles governing the Uniform Commercial Code for the sale of goods. If that doesn't um, operate in place, what we are going to see is essentially a parallel a uh, contractual body of law, a body of law governing contracts in a parallel system, parallel legal system to uh, state law and uniform codes. So that's going to create a, a slight confusion as far as interpreting these NFT sales in the context of a court and um, applying the standard uh, principles to those as far as uh, parties' rights and remedies. Additionally, one more complication is if we are talking about, you know, an NFT that is the copyright, the underlying IP itself, if that is the transaction of, at issue, well, then those transfers must be done by written instruments in order to be legally binding. So again, if it's not clear whether or not coded data can serve as the legal instruments, then it's possible that that NFT is not going to be uh, transactable or sellable. Um, at the outset. And finally, dispute resolution. So dispute resolution is difficult with, with self-executing contracts because for one, the part the performance is automatic. So the dispute would be whether or not certain conditions have been met in order for the contract to execute. Now, some of those conditions may be related to the provenance of the NFT. That's generally not going to be as much of a problem with NFTs because of the blockchain system, which uh, it conforms to uh, reset conditions and uh, data from previous blocks that will confirm the validity of the source of the NFT and the provenance behind it. But there are other conditions that may be required. If we are talking about certain uh, additional variables, that must be confirmed before the transaction is executed, there could be a dispute as to whether or not those variables have been met. 
has the full payment been met? That's a simple uh, standard coding uh, condition that is easy to determine. But it's possible that parties to an agreement may suggest other conditions. And how do we code that? That's going to be more difficult to tell. So is breach even a possible thing? Well, it's got to be coded if it's a condition to the agreement. So remedies for a breach of contract won't exist for any parties in, a, in an NFT transaction unless that specific condition of the contract has been coded into the smart contract. And we haven't reached a point yet where we have seen the expansiveness of all the different conditions in the music business that could apply here. So for instance, if we are talking about the use of an asset in uh, another medium, things like that, what do those look like? If we're talking about synchronization licenses, could there be a way of coding what a foreground use of a recording looks like or a background use looks like or a opening credits or an end credits uh, use of a piece of recorded music looks like. These are complications that need to be uh, uh, um, pursued and uh, discussed as far as how far the reach of NFT transactions can actually go within the music business system. Until that point, you know, we are sort of operating within, again, a parallel legal system with regards to dispute resolution. Currently, the uh, blockchain technology and smart contract technology enables a form of dispute resolution known as multi-signature address. So what this means is that the parties to the transaction, if the conditions, if there's a dispute as to whether or not conditions have been met for the smart contract to self-execute, then the parties can elect a third party neutral arbitrator to come in and determine whether or not that uh, those conditions have been met. So essentially, if you're going to uh, uh, visualize this, visualize the idea that two parties to an agreement have uh, access to launching you know, the nuclear code, right? They have one party has a key, the other party has a key, both parties must turn the key in order for the product to be launched. The arbitrator would be the third party that says, okay, if there's a dispute between the first two parties, the third, uh, the arbitrator must examine and then enter a key. So there must be at least two keys that are triggering the launch of the product. So that is the system that currently is possible for uh, arbitration. But this form of dispute resolution is completely outside the bounds of state law and contract law as governed by the, our judicial system. It's a separate independent form of adjudication that is not integrated into any current system. So dispute resolution is complicated, but it does exist in some form. It's a matter of figuring out how dispute resolution can fit within the rest of the legal system making NFT sales a viable form of transactions within the music business, the same way every other licensing agreement or transaction occurs. So the future of NFT, so how can we determine whether or not this is really going to be a permanent model for music assets to be distributed? Well, for one, in order for that to occur, there would need to be some sort of uniform protocols across the board. Otherwise, we could have several artists operating their own NFT transactions in a completely different value of the NFT in completely different conditions and precedents required for those uh, contracts to self-execute. This also speaks to whether or not this is going to be just simply a fad for you know, current collectors of you know, limited uh, you know, uh, scarce, scarce items in the marketplace or if this is going to function as a new permanent model for independent distribution of records and ticketing and um, other music assets. So depending on how far NFT transactions can be implemented into current existing uh, systems of legal enforceability, um, dispute resolution, and uh, practicality, 
that will determine whether or not this is here to stay. But as far as right now, it seems to be an interesting fad uh, among those who are interested in finding uh, unique items that are not uh, prevalent throughout the marketplace. So it's only a matter of time before the software itself is developed to a place where it now can be implemented uh, for further application. Thank you very much. We welcome any questions and comments. Our emails are posted below. We look forward to uh, any comments you may have. Thank you for listening.